All right, welcome back to the design and architecture track here at API Days. There's plenty of seats available up front, so all of y'all that are just coming in, feel free to come on, come on up. So now we have a fantastic talk by Antoine talking about back end is the new front end. I will let you take it away. Thanks. Um, hi, so my name is Antoine Cheron. Yeah, I'm French. Uh, I'm a PhD student at Faber Novel, who's the sponsor of the event. And for those who were at the previous talk, that's kind of the same talk, and that's the same idea. So that's a very awkward moment. Uh, but yet, the biggest difference that I'm going to talk about how I do that. So we can debate the idea and exchange about that. But the introduction is done then. So, so pre oh, are there people who didn't see the, the previous talk? So I'll do the full talk. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, well, so let me introduce you to Bob and Alice, or two characters for the day. Um, let's say. Bob says, Alice, we have a new app to build. Uh, I'll do the back end and you do the front end. So we'll have two teams. Um, next. So Alice thinks it sounds great. And let's design the API. So the next step is they're working. And they come up with a documentation of the API. So they agreed on the interface. Uh, the interface is OK. They go back to work. Um, and then after they started implementing the solution, Bob comes back and says, Alice, you know, uh, some parameters name are not easy to understand. Let's change name to full name. It's going to be more precise. And OK, so sure. And the business people told me we have to remove the dog name from the API add an operation to let people attend to the conference talks and update validation constraints because we misunderstood them, which happens very often with clients, I mean, companies. Um, and they continue working, and that's the moment to integrate backend with the front end. And then, whoops, we're going to be late. When I integrated the API, I realized that we made a few mistakes. So we have to rewrite the code again and again, because we changed parameters, we added operation, uh, we made mistakes, because we are humans, and so on. OK. Yeah, it's readable. So this is a very short example that I leave quite often when I work on projects with a front-end team, a back-end team, and a client with, like, building software for other companies. And these kind of, um, sorry. So all, I mean, most of the changes of the API are listed here. So regarding parameters and return value, we add some, we remove some, we rename, we rename URL parameters, we change the types, we change the formats, like is it a U, uh, an email or a UID, etc. Uh, sometimes we change default value, data model constraints. Regarding operations, it's very similar. We add some, we rename some, we remove some. Renaming means, like, I'll change the URL, base schema. Uh, sometimes we combine two operations into a single one, or we split them. We change URL schemas. We change the error condition, or the verb, or preconditions. Preconditions are the conditions that determine if we can trigger an operation or not, like user roles, resource state, etc. And there are others, which are restricting access to the API, or, and that's the most difficult point, changing the set or order of operations to execute to realize a business process, like ordering a product. Then. So if we don't want to change all the code anytime, or if we're bored, wasting time, we can generate code with OpenAPI. Uh, basically, if I do that, I won't have to write the validation code and data models anymore, because I wrote everything on my clients. I won't have to write or build the URLs by myself. I'm talking on the client side. 
and I should have fewer test drives because all this is generated. Still, um, each time I change the version of the API or anything, I have to rerun the generator. So nothing can be done at runtime. And that's something I propose to address. So let me list the goals of, well, I mean, the objectives I had. Um, I'd like to remove business rules and access control code from the front end, because they are always verified on the back end. I'd like the client to never break when I change keys and data models and URLs and so on. Um, it would be very cool if I could enable the automatic integration of new data and operations at runtime on the front end. So I had an operation on the API. It can be available on the front end without changing the code. And everybody should agree. I'd like to write more business-focused code than very technical code. So, um, OK, now let me show you. It's very similar to the previous demo. And I'll explain the domain before showing the demo. The first version is, so I had, I, I built just two, AP, two operations on the API. I can delete a talk and I can create, and I can create one. Um, if I want to create one, I have to send the name, the speaker, the start time, and I'll get the hypermedia link to delete the operation. On the second version, I'll change the URL, adding a S. It's now talks and not talk. Uh, in a very ugly way, I will implement access control with the role. Uh, and I'll change name to title. So I changed one key, and I had an operation to attend to a talk. Now it's, sorry, now it's the demo. Uh, so I'll start the server on the first version and the client. It's building. All right. Let me zoom in. Can you, yeah, can you read? Cool. Um, so that's the first version. I'll create my first talk. I'm the speaker. Uh, create a start time. And obviously it works. I can delete it and it's fine. Um, let me do the same with another component that is built just for version two. That's React code. Uh, sorry. Good. So now I'll say, yeah, I, I'm an administrator. This is my second talk. I'm still the speaker. I can change. Anyway. And yeah, now there is a category. I can create it, and it doesn't work because the URL is false, right? Now, I'll go back. So I'll restart the server, but on version two. Okay. Up. Okay, so same call works. And now I can attend to a talk. And the V1 is not working anymore, which is very obvious. But then I can continue. Uh, talk here, here. OK. So basically, I wrote this kind of code. Uh, the upper section is the invocation of the HTTP call. And the other one just shows you that I and written and hard coded the formula to invoke the, uh, to get the input from the user and then invoke the API with the correct information. So I have, in this small example, I have one field for the name and another one for the speaker, which explains why it breaks when I invoke the API. 
I'll go back to the demo and show you the version that, sorry, doesn't break. Uh, okay. Okay, so that's V2. It's a little bit different than Let's say I'm a user, the, the, the only difference that when I'm a user, I can't delete a talk. I don't have access rights. Um, I don't know. Talk, I'm still a speaker. Let me say it's today, 12.05. And yeah, still, and then it works. There is no button to delete because I can't do it. But still, now I can attend to a talk. Okay, you, you will be able to verify, but I didn't write anything on the client to let it know that the attend operation exists and that it should add a button to, it to um, implement this feature. So it was automatically integrated. And then if I created ping an admin, then I can delete it. Um, let me go back on the first version. Up. Up. Let me refresh the page. And then the form updated, I can create, whoa, sorry. I talk. And it works, and, and what it shows is that the client doesn't break, the interface updates automatically, and access control rules are handled. Um, so I go back to the slides. Here I go. Uh, so this case um, handled, I mean, this example handled all these cases, like adding parameters, removing, renaming, changing constraints. I didn't show the constraints, but there were constraints on the length of the talk name and with operations. Um, this is one work of my PhD, so what I'm trying to do is to address all points and make sure the proposed approach can work for all that changes or um, being able to explain why it doesn't work. And I'm still I'm continuing working on that, but on, on a bigger project, and I'll give you a link to a GitHub where you can find a bigger example, which is a kind of Jira. Um, all right, so what I propose to write is code that looks like this. Um, basically, this is still a React component. Uh, so first, like when I build the page, what I know is that I want to let my user create talk, and then how it sh should do, I don't care. It's just I want to create talk, whether it's a RESTful API or a SOAP API or anything. In the end, that's not really important. So what I write on the code is that I have a library, and I'd say I want an operation to create a talk. And that's the URL here. It's a link to the definition of what create talk means with lots of metadata that machines could, can use, which is basically semantics we use in the semantic web. Uh, and when I get this operation, the library gives me the list of parameters I have to send to the API. To the API. So I, I get the details on the parameters. I get a function to invoke the call the day and, and status information, like is it loading, Were there, was there an error, and what is it, the resulting data. Um, next is, now I don't write the form by myself anymore, so basically I build a generic form, like I have to do that on my front end to respect the design system I have on my project, and it generates the form. So you can put like uh, view logic here, and in the end, 
when I want to display the result and the data I, I received from the API, I can use the same React component I had before. I don't have to change anything. Just to pass the values here, you can see that I have the data and I invoke a, a function to say on this data, I want the name. And if I agree on the semantics, the library is going to look into the data and find the information you're looking for. That's the basic idea. Uh, and, and, and so if I just write, I want the name, I won't be able to get the data I was not looking for and the operation I didn't know that the API could give me. So I have two other operations. I can get the other data that I was not looking for and I can display them in a generic way. And I could get the other operations. And here you see that on the previous demo, I retrieved the delete operation, but not the attend operation. I just got the list of all the other operations which were available, and this is how I get the attend operation. Okay, so now I explain in more details, I mean, just the bigger picture of how it works, considering the back end. Uh, so the first requirement is pretty simple. I mean, if we have a documentation, just take your server and expose the documentation with open API on the options verb on the slash, like the first URL of the base path of your API. That's requirement one. The second one is take that documentation and enrich it with RDFS or OWL ontologies and use the JSON LD format. The third one is at runtime, use hypermedia controls to advertise available state transitions. So what operations are available, basically delete or not. Um, the default parameters value, I use this to, trans to transfer like technical IDs and information that the user can't know and the data type. Sometimes you can have, diff like your API could return different data like types. I, I, you could have a list with lots of events or notifications and have different type of notifications into it. And the last point is that on the front end, use a smart client to take advantage of this. Uh, so that's an example of open API documentation. I think that's the easiest point. Um, okay, then enriching it, like what I did at the moment is just for any operation, which is the top part, I just say that operation has that semantics, like it does this. There is the, okay, so my API vocab get talk action would, would be transformed into HTTPS, my HPI, my API slash vocab slash get talk action. Uh, just build the entire st string. And I add context at the end, which is a basic JSON LA document, if you know it. It just say in the above part of the document, or in the document, when update is, is used as a key, its semantic is this one. And when delete is written, its semantic is this one. And I use that to find information. Um, to give you an, an example of what's behind this URL and this semantics, there is a very, like, the most known vocabulary today is schema.org. It's used for marketing and showing your pictures on Google, like if you build a website. Uh, and, and behind that, you have lots of semantics. That's just a short part of the website that we can use to build algorithm that leverage this and make way smarter reasoning. For just one reason, there is no ambiguity between the language, like behind the sense of the word. Um, okay. 
third point using hypermedia controls. In this example, I try to make it as light as possible because I know some developers are very afraid of hypermedia controls. So the idea is above is the, the origi original response of the API. And then I added a links object into which I put the keys of the links I documented in OpenAPI. So I can just list the operations available without sending any parameters in a very short way. And if I want, I add parameters. And, um, and if the user can't delete the talk, I just don't send the talk operation. So if there is delete here, uh, like below, if it's in the document, it means I can delete it. If it's not, it means I can't. Um, and the last part uh, I showed you before, and then I just explain with a bigger example. So on the front end, when I write api.getOperation with a link, what I do is that I go back into the documentation and I look for the operation that has the same URL, I mean, as a description, or, and that's the point that makes the semantics and the URLs uh, more powerful than basic keywords, is that uh, if I fetch the vocab theta, I can get a metadata that say, this is the same as another one, or I can have way richer vocabulary to say that one word means kind of the same than another one, etc. This can be used to like uh, match similar or very different vocabularies. So if I say like, if I had create talk in another vocabulary that says it is the same as mine, it's fine. I can get the operation. And then I retrieve the operation and that's what we do when we generate code with OpenAPI. Uh, the second part is, is an operation available? Like when I want to answer the question, is an, an operation available? I write that, data that get hypermedia control with the link. And first I'll go back into the documentation and look for the delete keyword and try to find what words of the documentations have like have the semantic definition I mentioned. Then I go back into the operation. Okay. So this is the documentation of the, the response of the API I just invoked. And in the description of the response, I won't, I, I, I look at, I don't know, no, I don't know the word. I go back and I try to determine if delete is here or not. I mean, if the word here is in the list or not. If it is, I go back to the response and, where is the three? Okay, I go back into the response. Now I know what I'm looking for. And if the key is here, I return the operation to say it's available enriched with the, with the default parameters value that I received from the API. Um, okay, this is almost the end. Just wanted to say something about the limitations of this work at the moment. So at the moment, it's not possible or easy, I don't, I'm not sure at the moment, to link operations to specific fields of the data and I have one example. If you've ever used Jira, when you want to update a user story or a task, you can click on the description and update the description. Like when you click the description, it will show you the editor and then you can change the description and say, okay. That's something I can't do at the moment because all I know is that for a task, I have operations, but I can't link one specific operation to one specific field. Okay, that's three point and it's done.
Okay. Uh, I still have a lot to implement to take a significant step back on the technology. And vocabulary engineering and implementation is very cumbersome. And sadly, open vocabularies are poorly maintained because like, who does semantics web today? So who's maintaining vocabularies? Like almost nobody and that's a big mess of metadata. And I'm done. The code is available, so if you have the slides, you can go to see the code of this demo or the bigger project. And if you want to contact me to work on that, that's my email. And it's okay. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Big round of applause for Antoine. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's a no time for Q&A, but you can catch him Sorry. in the hallway. No, that's totally fine. Yeah. Totally fine.